Monday morning, everybody. Thank you so much for popping in to our another live Monday live stream. We've got uh, an Easter themed crochet along for you guys today. And don't mind me, I've got to fix my sound again. This is so funny. I have so much trouble with this. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? Oh you getting feedback? I've got, uh, they changed all the settings. I know, I think I said this the last time, but they changed all the settings on my, um, I, I changed all the settings on my, my, oh my gosh. Tablet? Yeah, on the tablet. They, <laughs> Good there morning, go. everyone. <laughs> Mr. Hello, Stitches hello. is here. You can tell I'm not the savvy one when it comes to like tech and stuff. <laughs> Golly gee. All right. Uh, give me one second here, gang. I'm almost got myself sorted. Well, out. while you're figuring that out. Oh my gosh. Whoa. <laughs> I well, that to part think, works. Um, we got a couple of, let's see, we got two super chats from Lynette. Thank you so much, Lynette. Appreciate that. And we got a membership milestone from Regina. Regina, can you read? Can you see it? Yes. Um, I'm I'm still just fiddling here. And Nico, good lord. Okay, everybody, let me catch up. Gifted membership from Nico. <laughs> oh my goodness. Regina says hello, uh -huh. all there, all. Jada, I'm just looking forward to what you create today. Thank you so much, Regina. That's a membership milestone from Regina. She got that out before we got going live here. Lynette popped in with not one, but two super chats. Thank you so much, Lynette. Big thumbs up for Lynette and Nico. Just now gifted five memberships. Thank you so much, Nico, our gifting ninja. Holy cow. I think I've got caught up. <laughs> Hey, it's Monday, all right? I, uh, I'm i just, um, I'm having a, I'm having a boomer Monday morning here, apparently. So, all right, I think I got everything worked out. I got my sound sorted out. Um, they changed, I, you know, when they update your, your, um, your device, and then you have to, to go and try and find where they put stuff. And I don't know, I just had a giant update for my tablet, and I, I can't find anything anymore. So I, this is me relearning how to use it still. But anyway, I think I've got it figured out. We are going to make a version of our little egg today. This is a nice, quick, scrap-friendly little Easter project. Um, we have a tutorial for it. We've got two egg tutorials, actually. We've got a one from way, 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 way back, uh, where we make a slightly larger version of this. And we have the shaker egg, which um, this one is modeled on. So I'm going to show you that you can put in an egg shaker, like a little noise maker, a bell, or a, uh, a shaker sound, or, you know, something if you want to put that in the middle. Otherwise, you can just make it a cute little stuffed toy. I am going to make it using blanket weight yarn today, a size 6 blanket chenille yarn. This is leftover um, blanket yarn I've got from my big fluffy Easter egg pillow that I made. And I am just going to use the exact same pattern to make this little egg, but I'm going to switch up the size of my yarn and my hook to make it bigger because I want a big, squishy, plushy version of my little Easter egg. This is a relatively quick pattern. So um, if you, you know, want to, I don't know, cheer up a friend or something, or, you know, make a little egg hunt for somebody, this is just a cute, soft toy. Uh, there's a bunch of ways you could sort of have fun with an egg like this. Like I said, we've got a tutorial for this that where we put a shaker in it, so it makes like a fun little musical instrument. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just a sweet little stuffed egg, and that's what we're going to do today. So um, just quickly, uh, thank you, Dawn. <laughs> Dawn has just popped in. Member for 36 months with a membership milestone. It's good afternoon to you all. Hope you're both well. Thank you, Dawn. We hope you're well, too. Um, yeah, my gosh, you can... We had a pattern purchase. Did you get, did did you get we? that? Yes, while you were trying to sort out the tablet. Oh my gosh. Um, it got pretty crazy there It for got a while. crazy here. Uh, I, I'll pop into the shop and take a quick peek. Um, Maria, thank you so much, Maria, for picking up a couple patterns. I'm sorry I missed that while I was fighting with my tablet. Thank you so much. Okay, um... That reminds me, we've got a sneaky sale on in the shop. It's our little egg pattern. It's um, not only is it on sale, it's also in the bargain shop, um, section of our shop. So it's a real uh, cheap little pattern. It's a one pager, easy to print. It's the entire pattern, plus a couple of fun ideas for turning this into a little something else if you wanted to. Um, that is uh, 
about the cost of a cup of coffee. <laughs> so if, if you care to help us out, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, Maria just picked up a, a, a copy for herself. Let's get into the pattern. So in the original tutorial, I used a size four medium weight yarn in acrylic, which is what this one is. I've got some acrylic colors here. I just wanted to sort of show you the difference between a few. Um, this is like a three, four weight. This is kind of on the, the, the three weight side. Um, and it's, this is, this is a wool, so this is a cotton, this is a wool. They're both kind of, a, this one's a little bit thicker, the purple one here, than the green one. Um, I would classify that a four weight. This is a four weight, also acrylic. So your, your weight category can vary. You can also completely change the weight category of this pattern. You just need to adjust your hook size accordingly. Because it's an amigurumi, I recommend a smaller hook than normal. This is a four millimeter, also known as a G or a six. This is the size of hook I used for the original pattern. In the, in the original tutorial, I say a 4.25 millimeter hook because it depends on the manufacturer. Some manufacturers make a G6 at four, goodness gracious. Thank you, Joanne. Um, four millimeters, some of them make them 4.25 millimeters. It's a negligible amount of difference. We're talking a quarter of a, uh, um, a quarter of a millimeter. So it's really, really small. Uh, but G6, small hook. If you have loose tension, use a smaller hook. Um, you also might want to uh, use the under the yarn under single crochet technique. We have a tutorial on that. We just sort of explored that uh, a little while ago here on the channel. So if that's a new idea to you, we'll, we'll link that below for you. But that's a way to make your stitching a little bit tighter. Otherwise, you can do what I'm doing today and try the big thick plushy yarn. I'm going to use an eight millimeter hook. That's an L or an 11. Um, so that's my eight millimeter hook. Pair of scissors, yarn needle, stitch marker, the usual. You also might want some stuffing. I'm going to continue to use this pom-pom yarn that I don't know what else to do with, but pillow stuffing, yarn ends, fabric scraps, uh, you know, whatever you want to use for stuffing. If you're going to turn it into a shaker, um, there's a lot of different things. You can put a bell in it. You can put a... Um, these are little containers that come from like those candy surprises, like a Kinder Surprise egg. Uh, or like like a gacha pong. Um, they come in different sizes depending on what you've gotten over the years. Um, old film canisters work really well too, uh, if anybody even has those still. Uh, but a little plastic container that you can fill with some rice or some beads or some sand if you want to make it a little shaker. We sort of detail that in the actual tutorial, so I won't bother too much with that today. Uh, but you can also just stick a bell in there too if you're giving it to a little kid or even a pet. Pets like to bat these around. Um, all right, let's get into the actual tutorial. I'm just going to move my yarn kind of out of the way here. And I'm going to continue with my big yarn. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll put these guys over here. There we go. All right. So let me find the end of this. And let's get to it. So using a blanket weight yarn or whatever yarn you're going to use, I do recommend starting with a cinch circle because that way we can make the this hop really, 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 really tight. Um, I like to just create a crossed loop. I cross my yarn. I hold it where the yarn is crossed. Hook goes through the circle and then I just grab the yarn and pull it back through and chain one and that secures the circle. Now it's not going to come apart. And then of course, remember when you're working a, a cinch circle, you wanna work over top of your short tail and that lets you cinch the whole thing shut nice and tightly. Uh, welcome, welcome. If you're just dropping by, we are making an egg, a stuffed egg toy. I'm just going to be using a much thicker yarn and a bigger hook today. So here we go. Into that cinch circle, you're gonna work eight single crochet. Eight single crochet. <clears throat> Excuse me. I hope everybody have a lovely weekend. It is starting to show signs of spring ever so, ever so slowly up here. Eight single crochet, there we go. All of them worked into that um, cinch circle and all of them worked over top of that little short tail. I think I'm gonna take some more slack off my yarn here. All right, grab the short tail, cinch it shut, nice and tight. There we go. 
All right, I'm gonna work over top of my short tail, but you actually, you know what, maybe I won't bother. You don't have to work over top of it because we are creating a three-dimensional object. So this will just end up in the middle, but you are gonna want that stitch marker because it's helpful to kind of mark the first stitch of each row. We're working in the round. So we're not joining our rows with a slip stitch. We're not chaining one at the beginning of a row. We're just always working the row's first stitch into what was the first stitch of the row before that. So here we go. I will stop working over top of my short tail. I'll just leave it to the back. We are going to make an oval increase. So this isn't a double, this is sort of a third. Instead of doubling up our stitches, we are increasing them by one third. So we are going to work two single crochet into the first stitch of what was row one. And before I leave, I'm gonna put my stitch marker on the first stitch of the row there. Hi, Crocus. Crocus has been a member for 13 months, says loving this Easter egg. Well, we just got started, so I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I love these. I mean, come on. What's, what's, it's such a, it's such a nice shape, even just to, uh, 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 hold in your hand. Hey, yeah, you have, you have anxiety issues? Make yourself a couple of these. <laughs> that actually feels really good. <laughs> and throw them at people. And throw them at people, yeah. Yeah, you can toss them at people. Throw them at the people giving you anxiety. Literally, you can throw eggs at people. <laughs> the beauty about those little stuffed eggs is Boink. you can throw them as hard as you want. Yes, and they won't hurt anything. <laughs> but you'll feel good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, two single crochet into the first stitch, a single crochet into each, or I'm sorry, into the next stitch. So it's two and then one. And then we repeat that three more times. So two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet once into the next stitch. And remember, when you're working with fluffy yarn, you are feeling for the next stitch as much as you are looking for it. So there's my next stitch. Got to stick my hook in there, two single crochet into the next stitch, and single crochet once into the next stitch. So we're going from eight stitches in row one to 12 stitches at the end of row two. There's the next stitch, two single crochet into that, and one single crochet into that. Keegan's working on a double crochet zigzag blanket, the chevron blanket. How can I change colors? Keegan, we've got a chevron blanket tutorial. Um, if Mr. and Stitches can find it and toss it in the chat there, uh, we can. change colors. The best time to do it is right at the end of the row. I fasten off and then join my new yarn at the beginning of the next row and I just continue with the pattern. Mm -hmm. But we do demonstrate that in the tutorial. Um, so that should help, I hope. I that, will put it in the chat. Thank you, mister. Hello, everybody who's just popping in. Welcome, welcome. It's a Monday. All right. So that is the end of row two. We're at 12 stitches. We are going to single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. So for row three, it's just single crochet in each stitch. That's the first stitch. I'm going to mark it with my stitch marker. That way I don't have to worry so much about counting just feeling ahead for the next stitch. You'll still have 12 stitches at the end of row three. Hey, Jasmine. Jasmine's been a member for 17 months. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Jasmine says, hi, hope you're about he okay. Well, hope, hi, hope you're about he okay. Love watching your videos. Hope you're both okay. I bet you that's I hope you're both okay. <laughs> Don't have a bout of anything, luckily. <laughs> Thank you, Jasmine. <laughs> Was it the chevron blanket or the chevron scarf? Chevron blanket. The blanket. Yeah. All right. That's the end of row three. And as you can see, there's my short tail that I started with. It's in, going to be inside. So if you want, you can just kind of tuck it down there if you're not working over top of it. Already, I think I like the shape of this. It is uh, going to be a little bit wider. That's row three on the original one, and that's row three on this one. So nice, nice increase in size. Row four, we're going to increase again. We're going to start off with two single crochet in the first stitch. And I'm gonna mark the first of those two with my stitch marker. Single crochet into each of the next two stitches. Hey Cherry, we're making big fluffy eggs. I'm making a bigger, fluffier version of this little guy today. And then we repeat that little increase all the way around. So two single crochet into the next stitch. That's the increase. 
and then single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And that's two of four increases done. Two single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into each of the next two. Two single crochet into the next stitch and single crochet into the last two. And that takes us up from 12 stitches to 16. So that's the end of row four. Row five, we're gonna single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So I'm just gonna start with a single crochet. That's stitch number one. Put my stitch marker back on it. And now I can just relax and just feel ahead for the next stitch and single crochet into each one. Give myself a little more slack. Judy says, can I get a sneak preview for March? What about March, Judy? What March sneak preview are we talking about? And I'm hoping you mean like weather because I would love a sneak preview of spring weather. <laughs> can we get one of those? <laughs> um, if anybody's got questions about the granny square we did on Friday, so the Jacob's Ladder granny square, I noticed I was in the comment section there Last night, I noticed a couple of you were sort of experiencing some difficulty. Um, we would be happy to do a Q&A on that particular square, since it seems to have befuddled a few of you. Um, and uh, if you've got specific questions, so like, let us know where you're having the trouble, like what row, you know, what you think you might, where you think you might be encountering the issue. Um, and we'll kind of do our best to collect all those questions together. And we'll do a little we'll do a little live Q and A on that. Um, so if you if you feel you need a little extra help, that'll be there. And of course we'll leave it up. So even if you can't make the live, whenever we we uh, manage to sneak it in, um, it'll certainly be there as a resource for you. Um, I just want to remind everybody though, if you are kind of having trouble with the Jacob's Ladder, we've got a scarf tutorial where we made the Jacob's Ladder scarf. So it's just working back and forth, which um, you know gets you comfortable using double crochets and always putting the chain loop in the same place. But if you've made a solid double crochet granny square, and we have a tutorial for that too, it's just that. It's that square, just adding loops um, at the same eight points every single time. So if you think of it like that, that might also help as you're kind of working yourself around, just working on double crochets and making sure that you put the loops in at the right place. Um, in the video, we marked out the four corner loops with stitch markers. You might also find it helpful to mark the middle of the row stitch upon which the middle loop is made. That also might be helpful for you too. Um, I just didn't want to weigh us down with too many stitch markers in the tutorial. <laughs> All right, at the end of row five, we still have 16 stitches all the way around. And we are going to do one more row of increasing. So row six begins with two single crochet in the first stitch. So it's two single crochet. I'm going to mark that first stitch. And then it's single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And then we repeat that three more times. So two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, and then a single crochet into each of the next three, and then repeat two single crochet into the next stitch, and single crochet into each of the next three. increase and then single crochet into each of the last three stitches and that is row six <clears throat> row seven to nine you're just single crocheting in every single stitch all the way around I will continue to mark the first stitch of the row so 
Before I continue though with row seven, I think we're just gonna take a quick look at counting rows. If you come down to the bottom, you should be able to sort of make out that little round row that's row one, and it turns into row two, bump, right here. So I'll just ignore that for now. I can feel it though. So there's row one, here's row two, and row three, row four, row five, and row six. So I can feel those six rows I've already done. And now I know I need to do rows seven through nine. Um, Kim and I were chit-chatting about not being able to see the stitches very well when working with plushy yarn. And I do recommend if you, even if you find the stitch marker kind of helps keep track of the first row, but now you can't sort of see maybe which, where the stitch is or maybe count the rows, it also helps to write it down. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you finish row one, you write down one. If you finish row two, you can either write down another tick next to row one and then, you know, like mark it off in sets of five, or you could literally write one, finished two, finished three, and just write down the row that you've finished so that you always kind of know how many rows you've done. Um, I've done that in the past too. Whatever, whatever little um, trick you need to employ in order to kind of keep track of where you are, it's all valid. It's all on the table. So now we're just single crocheting in each stitch all the way around for rows seven, eight, and nine. And we still have 20 stitches in the row. So at the end of row six, we had 20 stitches and you're still gonna have 20 stitches for row seven, row eight, and row nine. Welcome, welcome everybody. Ooh, a dragon egg, Catherine. Yeah, maybe that's exactly what, ooh, oh, gee, gee. A dragon egg should be like sparkly. Do they make sparkly blanket yarn, anybody? I haven't seen any. Aunt of Angels, are you talking row three on this one? Row three is just single crochet in each stitch all the way around, honey. So after you start with eight and then you do your increase in row two, row three is just straight single crochet. Oh, Melissa, is it your birthday on Friday? <laughs> yes, we have a new tutorial coming this Friday. I would say it's I would say it's special, but I don't know. Anything anything new is kind of special because you've spent time on it. But um, I don't know. It's uh, it is new though, and, and we it is coming Friday. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Catherine. You could you could pair up the blanket yarn with a sparkle yarn. I was just wondering. I know that Red Heart makes a, a comfort that's got a sparkle that runs through it. I was just wondering if if maybe there's a blanket yarn that has a sparkly or even not necessarily sparkly, but like you know how sometimes you know how velvet has a bit of a sheen to it, depending on which way you're kind of laying it. I'm just wondering if they're making, if they've managed to make a big plushy yarn that's got a bit more of a sheen to it, because that would make a really pretty anything, but especially, especially dragon eggs. Uh, yarn manufacturers, if you're listening, <laughs> a shiny, oh, a listening. shiny blanket yarn, please. They listen and they watch. Yes, they do. They listen and they watch. <laughs> Um, we, I'm going to shout out all the March birthdays. Okay. Cause we have a, we have a few people that are coming up in March. So we're not, we're not necessarily going to be live streaming on your birthday, but a happy birthday to all the March babies. Yes. Pre happy birthday. Does that make you guys a Pisces? What is, what is, what is March mostly? It's probably two i think every is every month split i think so yeah it usually splits at about the 21st though i is think is that is oh okay regina is the 16th pisces yeah it is pisces not bad not bad not bad the hugging fish hugging fish <laughs> fish like hugs too all right that's the end of row eight <laughs> I just, you, I, you see me kind of pulling oh, this apart. Aries. Yeah, you were right. Pisces and Aries. Pisces and Aries. Okay. March 8th is Barb. Hey, Connie. 
Connie has just gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Connie. And now because I'm actually able to pay attention, I can say that Catherine won it. <laughs> Congratulations, Catherine. Welcome back to the family. I am on row nine. I'm still single crocheting in each stitch all the way around. Um, you could definitely add a shaker to this big egg if you wanted to. I am not going to, um, even though I do technically have a shaker that's big enough that could go in it. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> that's a jumbo kinder egg. That's a jumbo thing. kinder egg. I think I got a whole doll out of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah comboing it with a metallic yarn would work especially since it's just sort of a toy um i can see why they maybe wouldn't make a baby blanket yarn with a sparkle running through it like that's kind of an obvious but i realize that people don't use the blanket yarn for um just baby stuff um, and i know they make blanket yarn for non-baby stuff too so um i don't know i'm just thinking it would be kind of neat I'm, I'm i'm kind of rethinking it i don't think i actually want to sparkle like a metallic thread running through it i think i actually just want it to be more velvety like with more of a sheen i think that would be really nice Oh, I think it would. Blanket, Baronet Blanket makes a sparkle yarn, says Lenora. Okay, I haven't seen it, but that's not a surprise. I seem to not see things <laughs> very frequently. That is the end of row nine. I'm just going to double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, I have finished row nine. I still have 20 stitches all the way around. At the end of row nine, you're going to single crochet into each of the next six stitches. This isn't going to change the stitch count. It's just going to even up the edge of the egg. And in regular yarn, maybe not so much the blanket yarn, it's a little more obvious that uneven top at the end of all the increasing. Um, but it's good to do it just the same. There we go. All right. So getting a nice, nice, egg shape here. Hey, Maria! Maria with a super chat. Thank you so much, Maria. This is Maria's first super on the live stream. Thank you so much. It says, it's Masha! Masha, hi! I finally made it to a live. When it is live, yay! Egg looks so snuggly. Thank you, Masha. I'm glad you made it. Masha is a new family member, too. Yeah, this is going to be a snuggly egg, especially once I fill it full of all of this squishy pom-pom yarn. That's going to be nice. All right. Let's do our first row of decrease. That is for the egg. <laughs> Shell's telling me, yes, they have burnout blanket sparkle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can tell how much I get out, right? Um, I, I've, like I said, I've seen the comfort sparkle, but I hadn't seen the burnout sparkle. So I will investigate that because that, I'm thinking that might make really pretty big chubby Easter eggs. If you have some in the stash and you make an egg, please send me a photo at the Etsy shop. I would love to see it because I feel like that would be just so like perfect. Row 10, we're going to start with decreasing. I'm going to use that new decrease method um, that you guys taught me there a couple streams ago where you pick up the first two loops, the first front facing loops of the next two stitches, which I still have to really struggle a little bit with. I would with, like but... to make a, a request on those photos. If anyone does decide to send a photo of their chicken slash dragon egg, you have to put something interesting next to it. Oh, I like that. Something interesting. Okay, I have picked up the front facing loops of both of the next two single crochets on my hook. I'm going to yarn over to pick up a loop and then single crochet. So that's my first decrease, single crochet, two stitches together. You can single crochet two stitches together however you're most comfortable with it. Um, I've really enjoyed sort of this new method I've learned uh, lately. And it does feel a little less bulky, but it is a little trickier for me. I have to really stop and think about what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, we're going to single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And now another decrease. So I'm going to pick up the front loops of the next two stitches on my hook. There they are. And yarn over to pick up a loop and single crochet. So that is decrease number two and single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And 
and decrease number three. So I'm single crocheting two stitches together. And single crochet into each of the next three. Really glad that I'm using a stitch marker on the first stitch of the row because when I am focusing on decreases, I rapidly forget how many I've done. So it's helpful to know where the beginning of the row is. And my last decrease, I'm going to pick up the front facing loops. Come here. Krista had a great idea. Yes. Krista says, can you imagine these little crochet th eggs in thread in all different co colors sitting under one of our chibi chubby chickens? Oh, that would be so cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. But then you'd have to crochet a miniature nest too. That would be too difficult. That would be adorable. That would be really, really cute. That'd be a good little, uh, that'd be a good little toy. Um, for for a, a kid, as long as they weren't too too small. Yeah. Um, the little little nest with the little mini eggs and then the chicken on top. Absolutely. How cute is that? Mm-hmm. Um, I, right. I would like that actually. You would like that, would you? Yes, I would like that toy. <laughs> Get on that. At the end of row I would ten. Like to place my order, please. You're placing an order. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. At the end of row ten, you can pause. I like to pull up all my loops so it doesn't unravel on me. And then start stuffing. If you're adding a noisemaker, you want to put a little bit of stuffing into the top or the bottom, I guess, of your egg before you put your noisemaker in. So if you are putting in a noisemaker, put in a little stuffing first, then put your noisemaker in. Make sure that your noisemaker actually has a noise in it if you're going to do that. If you're not putting in a noisemaker, you can just stuff the entire egg, which is what I'm going to do. Hey, Teddy. Teddy has been a member for 57 months. Goodness gracious. Thank you, Teddy. Teddy with a membership milestone says, my first Jacob's Ladder Square came out a bit wavy. I'm wondering if crocheting tighter would help, especially when slip stitching the loops to the double crochets. Don't worry too much about the waviness. Um, it could be that your stitching was a little bit on the loose side, but I mean, I let me just show you mine quickly because I have it here. You'll see that mine is a little bit a little bit wavy in between the ladders, right? Um, and if you flatten it down or if you do a little bit of blocking, it'll probably even out. So don't worry too much about the waviness because when we attach all of our squares together, um, that's when it's good to block your blanket. So all of your squares end up sizing up more or less exactly the same way. Uh, so a little bit of like, if you've got like a little bit of waviness or whatever between your ladders, it's also because when you're joining your loops together, it does create um, almost like a spine running through. So if you've ever done any boning uh, when you're like doing corset work or, um, you know, hat work, if you use any kind of like um, boning in, in crochet, or I should say in sewing, this literally creates like a spine, like you would ha see in a, in a corset for, for forming uh, of a bust, a bust or something like in a fancy dress. So it does create a little stiffness. This is now the more sort of soft flowy fabric in between um, the spines basically and so you might see a little bit of waviness if you are mindful and you crochet a little bit tighter in between your loops you might see a reduction in waviness but it's really not that important um, and it's just sort of the nature of the pattern but when you've got them all joined together then and you block out your squares or your entire blanket that's all just going to disappear so don't worry too much about it the gifting ninja has appeared and vanished again. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Dawn. Thank you, Dawn, for picking up a pattern. What did I miss here in the chat? Nico. Nico gifted 10 memberships. Holy smokes. Thank you, Nico. Thank you so much. Goodlish. Graces. Barb, Tammy, Diane, Marlene, Charlene, Regina, Dawn, and Unique Amazing Stripes, Lady A, Joyce, and Bobby have all won. Congratulations, guys. Thank you so much, Nico. Holy smokes. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm prattling on about squares. a sale at the same time. Yes, and a sale. That was Dawn. Thank oh, you so that much. that was Dawn. Okay. I managed to, uh, to get the notifications to show this time, but couldn't figure out where to find my sound. <laughs> it's all right. I'm getting the hang um, of it. We are all sitting here wondering if you purchased your pom-pom yarn in bulk. Oh, why? Because I seem to have so much of it? 
Isn't it's like it the crazy? Never ending ball of yarn. It's this is the same ball of yarn of pom pom <laughs> I've been working on this whole time, and I you've still have another. In, you've been stu- oh my goodness, guys! She she has a whole other ball. Let's see the second one. You haven't even gotten into yet. Oh my goodness! And I had a turquoise one. I think it's somewhere. You've been stuffing toys with that yarn for like three months. I know. And can I just say, it also makes the best stuffing. <laughs> so if you have some of this stuff and you don't know what to do with it, it makes amazing stuffing. We have to set limits on Jada's yarn purchasing. <laughs> Otherwise, she she goes a little overboard, like a, you know, like an addiction. I. <laughs> I bought this ages ago, <laughs> ages ago, uh, and I just couldn't warm up to it. All right, so I'm just going to cut that there. I will add a little bit more later, but you basically just um, fill your egg with as much stuffing as you can handle while you're still crocheting, just to kind of get that shape going. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that was the end of row 10. I'm going to put my hook back in. I've added some stuffing. I'll add a little bit more before I completely finish it off. I just love this colorway. It is so pretty. Um, what's the name of this colorway? I don't remember. Something pastel? Something soft? I don't know. Um, I'll figure it out in a minute. Now, row 11, we're going to do a little more decreasing. So we're going to go from 16 stitches at the end of row 10 down to 12 at the end of row 11. So we're going to start with another decrease or single crochet two stitches together so I'm going to do that thing try to get both of those loops up on my hook I really have to pause when I do this there we go and single crochet and then I will mark that as the first stitch of the row this is the first stitch of row 11 single crochet into each of the next two stitches Right, and decrease again. Single crochet two stitches together, however you want to do that. This is really tricky for me, but I like the end result. I like a challenge once in a while. I got complacent with the other single crochet two stitches together. This one makes me think. There's a decrease and single crochet into each of the next two stitches. I agree, Dawn, I don't want to cure either. I, I love I love being addicted to yarn. <laughs> there we go. Single crochet, two stitches together. Dawn says this is my happy place. This is my happy place with all of you guys making something as long crafty. As Jada's surrounded by yarn, and I'm full of coffee and cookies. Mm -hmm. We're all good. Oh, and the squirrels and chipmunks have to be fed. Oh, our little chipmunk showed up. Yeah! What we what did we uh, we we heard the the geese yesterday? I stepped yeah, outside was that yesterday, and then little little Chippy showed up. Heard the honking geese overhead. Got made very his, excited. Uh, his big spring announcement yes, made his big debut. So Chippy's yeah. back. So we were happy to see little Chippy. So happy to see Chippy. All right. So that was row eleven. Single crochet two stitches together. Single crochet into each of the next two stitches. Repeated four times. We're down to twelve stitches. And uh, I'm not going to add my stuffing just yet. I will add just a little bit more at the end of row 12. At the end of so row 12, we're going to single crochet two stitches together all the way around. So now I really need to focus. Haha. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to use the actual hook of my hook. Makes sense. So there's my first single crochet two stitches together. We're going to single crochet two stitches together six times in total. And uh, gee, it's much easier if I actually use the hook to pick up the front loops of those two stitches and then single crochet instead of trying to just ram my, my hook through don't it. Don't go off camera, otherwise we can't follow you. Sorry, am I going off camera? You're good. That's three. How's Chippy going to learn how to crochet if you go off <laughs> camera? I should knit him a little blanket. Get him a little, little wool blanket. If I make him a blanket, though, the squirrels are going to steal it. Yeah. I think a little, a tiny little uh, toque, little sp early spring winter toque would be cute. I think they're more likely you, to, you think, I'm, in all seriousness, wear? I think they're more likely to, to take a, to happily take a little wool blanket because I mean, they'll steal anything that's not nailed down. Oh yeah. But, but you they'll actually use a blanket. In his bedroom and 
turn it into a sleeping bag or yeah. something. He might cover his nut stash with it. Wow, careful there. <laughs> Family friendly show. <laughs> I said nut stash. Uh, yeah, yeah, you did, you did. I didn't say nuts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish stuffing my egg Chippy now. He never covers those anyway. He <laughs> just lets them fly freely. That's true. <laughs> Happy spring, everyone. Oh my gosh! All right. <laughs> couple more of these and I think that's it for the egg so that's enough stuffing now um, the last thing you want to do is slip stitch around the post of each stitch so this is to close up the top you can also especially when you're using a thick blanket yarn cut a length fasten off weave that yarn back and forth through all of those stitches and then cinch it shut um, or do a combination, maybe work around a couple of stitches just around the post. So what I'm doing is I'm just slip stitching around the post. So I'm sticking my hook in from through one stitch and then popping it back out through the next stitch. There's the post and then I'm slip stitching. And this is to be done relatively tightly. And it will close up the space. And you can also always just cinch up what's left. You know what? I think I will do a little bit of cinching. So snip my yarn, fasten off. And I'm just going to weave my tail. There we go. Just weave it back and forth through some of those stitches. And just <clears throat> cinch it shut. I'm just grabbing loops of stitches. There we go. Ultimately, you just don't want any stuffing to show. So that's the top of the egg. This is the bottom of the egg. And I'll weave it through a couple more little loops. And then I'm just going to pull what's left of this tail into the, bo the body of the egg. And that is that. There we go. All right, so an egg. This is so cute. One egg made from the top to the bottom using bulky weight yarn. And there's the exact same pattern using a size four medium weight yarn and a G6 hook. So this is an L or an 11 and the bulky weight yarn. And this one is the G or the six, G6, four millimeter and a regular size four medium weight yarn. Um, as for fiber, you can use whatever you want. So if you've got tail ends of wool, fine cotton, acrylic blends, doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what the fiber content is. This is a real like use your scraps up kind of project. Um, you probably only need about 15 to 20 yards of a size four medium weight yarn. Uh, when it comes to the, the blanket weight yarn, maybe 25 to 30 yards, just cause it's a bit bigger and a little more uh, like the fluffier yarns kind of don't go like they eat up faster than the smaller yarns if that makes sense um, so yeah there we go that's that's so cute and it's nice and squishy and of course you can stick a little noisemaker in there if you want love this all right um, does anybody have any questions about the egg <laughs> does anyone have any questions about the chipmunk we uh, we, we we do have um a, the original tutorial is linked below and it's like i said it's the exact same pattern that we did here um we, so if you want to make a big fluffy one just sub in the thicker yarn and the bigger hook we have a question from wendy sure uh let me see if i can see wendy jada what brand is your size 11 hook you used you know what um this is a knit picks um but let me just draw your attention to this this is peeling off um so there's like a there's like a a nice 
like oh kind man of, that's not good no it's like a, it's like a uh, a grippy plastic coating that i think the size information is printed on and it's on the grip of the hook um and it has just been coming right off like wow, since terrible. i started using it and this isn't an old hook so um i don't know if they've fixed that or if this is just you know i i'm somehow leaking acid or something <laughs> but um it's peeling so um i can't 100 percent recommend that hook it's comfortable but i don't like it when it's peeling that really bothers me yeah, so um if you can get a clover amour good. hook in that size i would recommend that one over uh, a nitpick but i've um, if they didn't, if they didn't put that little cover on, um, it, or just made the uh, number sticker tiny, that would have made a big difference, I think. Mm -hmm. It's still comfortable to use. Like I'm, I, I obviously didn't have any problems using it today, but you know, aesthetically speaking, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I do like the gold uh, hook top and the black bottom. That's nice, but I don't like you know, I don't like that. My uh, Clover Amours. This is a bigger hook. It's just one piece. That grip is one piece of plastic rubber. It doesn't have a coating. It doesn't, there's nothing to peel off. So um, much more, much, much better product in my opinion. In my opinion. I highly recommend the Clover Hook, says Audrey. I concur. Not, not a, not a, uh, uh, Clover has never supported that, or I should say, um, what do you, what do you call that? There, it's a, not a, promoted they we've never promoted clover because we've been paid to i just bought them because i needed something with an ergonomic handle because um my grip was starting to fail me so i tried these because i found them on amazon and i have since tried several other ergonomic hooks not a ton but you know several tulips um this one the knitter's pride etc etc and i have been using these clover amour hooks um almost exclusively now since like i don't know 20 2018 2019 and i mean i crochet daily and absolutely nothing has happened to these hooks they are still in absolute pristine condition so i cannot sing their praises high enough love them um yeah any more questions here? Jada has patterns for baskets, says Debbie. Yes, I do. I have several. We have an entire playlist on crochet oh, we baskets. Have, yeah, we have, what, four or five uh, YouTube tutorials on baskets? Crocus says, Jada, what if we had a crocheted fabric basket for the egg? I love that. I'll we link, do have an I'll egg basket in tutorial. The chat for you. Yeah. Um, and the others should be linked to it, I think. Regina says, I have Bernat Blanket Speckle. Would that work? It's a super bulky size six. I would say yes. Um, speckle, I'm assuming, just refers to the color. Like, this is like a variegated. You could use... Honestly, I think you can use any yarn for this project, really, guys, as long as it's consistent. Like, you can't use yarn that's like this, inconsistent, where there's like a pluff and then nothing and then a fluff and then nothing. Um, but we consistent yarn of any size works for this pattern. 12 basket videos and tutorials. We have 12? Holy yep. <laughs> I thought it was like five. <laughs> Audrey, you can send send anybody, anybody who's got pictures they want to share with the whole community. Um, pop into our Etsy shop. Click on message seller if you haven't already messaged us before. Otherwise, you can <clears throat> click on the existing message thread. And you can attach a photo to your message. Um, there's like a little, either a, a camera icon you click on inside the message box, or it's the little the little landscape uh, icon that you can click on. And that will let you attach a photo or take a photo. Um, all right, listen, everybody, if you don't have any questions about the egg, that's fine. Um, if you do, feel free to leave them down below. And I um, always do my best to try and get to the questions when I see them. Sometimes, um, you know, I'm only in the comments section like once or twice a week. So if uh, you do leave a comment and you don't hear from me for a few days, that's why. But I do try to get to everybody. Um, there is a tutorial for this. So in the meantime, um, if you want to zip through the tutorial, uh, if you've got like a question about sort of counts or the, sort of the way the stitches look, maybe in an easier to see yarn, the tutorial will help you out there. Also, if you wanted to add a, a shaker or a noise maker, um, we cover that in more detail in that tutorial. So that's there for you. Um, and uh, if you have any specific questions about the Jacob Ladder 
granny square, please leave them in the comment section under the Jacob Ladder Square. You can pop into the Etsy shop and ask us there. And uh, we will like, kind of compile them all into um, sort of a, a Q&A session. And we will do our best to answer any questions anybody's got about the Jacob Ladders um, Square um, and, and maybe help iron out anything that anybody's finding tricky. Um, it's, it was an hour long tutorial. We did our best to try and not make it like ridiculously long winded, but also, you know, I, I went into detail on where I thought most of the problems might be. Um, but you know, I don't necessarily see it from every perspective all the time at all. So if there's something you feel you need clarified about that tutorial, um, send us a very specific, um, question because it really helps me sort of zero in on maybe what row or what the exact problem is um, because uh, general questions are difficult for me to answer. Um, but uh, please, please, uh, please try to be as specific as you can and I can, I can be much more helpful with the answer. So uh, thank you guys so much. And if we get a nice decent amount of them, then we'll, we'll see about addressing that um, if we can midweek. Uh, in the meantime, we will have a new tutorial for you on Friday. So if you make eggs for your your cozy egg hunt a cozy egg hunt oh what does a cozy egg hunt mean to you i just had just had visions of like bunny <laughs> slippers and hot cocoa and soft little eggs <laughs> hidden around the house oh my goodness i love it uh marie had a quick question yes, about yes. a face scrubby um didn't we do a washcloth a few years ago um what is the specific question about the scrubby we have got several um, is it about uh, the... We have a simple cl classic washcloth. We have a um, we've knit, got a be knitting beginners tutorial for a washcloth. So we've got a really good face wash cloth. I'm going to link that one. Um, we also have some scrubbies that are good for in the bath, um, good for the face. Um, we have a, we have a few actually. We have a playlist I think of washcloths and scrubbies. And anything can double as a face cloth, so long as you use a nice cotton. Remember, you don't want to use anything too scratchy. You don't want to use anything plastic or acrylic against your face, usually. I'm going to say usually, because uh, you want it to feel nice. A little bit of scrubbing power is okay, but you generally want it to feel nice, because your facial skin is, is pretty delicate stuff. Takes a, takes a beating most of the day anyway, so you know, try to be mm. nice to it when you're cleaning. <laughs> Um, so just about anything can double, any pattern can double as a face scrubby, so long as you use like a nice cotton for that. Um, Jessica Rabbit, hey there, member for 27 months with a membership milestone, says have a wonderful week. Thank you, Ms. Rabbit, you and the girls, have a great week too. That goes for you and everybody. Remember, um, we want to see interesting things next to the little Yes. Dragon. Please Dragon make egg. your egg photos I, as... I want to see some imagination out there. Make them as interesting as possible because I can't wait to share those. <laughs> That's going to be great. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Uh, questions, wherever you can, you can put them. We will try and find them. We will speak to you all soon and we will see you for sure on Friday. Mr. and Stitches, anything you want to add? Um... No, I think you covered it. We'll just remind everyone of our sneaky sale today is oh, the yes. egg. Yes. Feel free to pick um, up our egg pattern. It's uh, on sale and it's in the bargain shop. So it's anytime a... you purchase a pattern, it, it helps a lot, supports the show, and uh, memberships really help support the show. Hmm. I think I'm in love and with And also uh, liking and subscribing is a big help. We appreciate that. Um, I feel like there was something I wanted to mention, but I forgot. Did we did we catch everyone's I think we got Nico gifting. Yep. I think we did, yes. Yeah, Thank yep, you, yep, everybody. Yep. And um I tried the Q and A thing. Did it didn't work? But it's either not working or no one left a question. Okay, that's no big deal. Um, we've got a, a super intelligent bunch here. So if they've got questions, they know where they can so leave them. Leave them under the video or leave them in the Etsy shop. And, um, and that's perfect. We will find them there. Yeah. Uh, just, just so you're, you know, <clears throat> the little original egg, three inches or eight centimeters top to bottom. And the new big one, five inches or 12 and a half centimeters top to bottom. Um, so that is the difference in size. Same pattern, different hook, different yarn. So there you go. How much yardage? Is in the yarn you used today? Uh, Don, I think I used around 25 to 30 yards just to be safe, but pr 
probably less if I'm being honest, but I always try to overestimate. Um, the little one is like 15 to 20 yards. The real question is how many yards of pom-pom yarn did you use as stuffing? I still have the magic ball some of, of it can left. We see, can we see the backup stuffing yarn? Oh my goodness. I still have <laughs> some of this left. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh. Anyway. All right, everybody. <laughs> We will see you later this week. Have a great one and uh, stay safe and crafty.